GitHub Copilot Goes GA, a fresh new web framework, the best way to try out a new version of macOS, and a way to do machine learning on a 40-year-old computer. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is a show that covers the biggest developer news and open source projects of the week. So please like this video and subscribe to our channel so that I can keep buying ridiculous shirts like the one I'm wearing right now that I don't even remember when I got it, but I also miss the old Kanye. So anyway. All right, so we've been gone for a couple of weeks. The TLDR is that I was out of the country and then everyone at GitHub had the week off. So I'm sorry, we will try not to have that happen again, but we've got lots of stuff to catch up on. So let's just get into it. All right, so the first thing that I have to talk about is that GitHub Copilot is now generally available to everyone. Yay! And GitHub Copilot, if you're not familiar, is a fantastic extension in VS Code, Visual Studio. It's available for JetBrains, IDEs, and NeoVim, and it acts as your pair programming buddy, your copilot, if you will, helping suggest the next line of code. And this isn't just like a single word or line, it can actually suggest complete methods, boilerplate code, unit tests, even complex algorithms. It's very cool. I've been using GitHub Copilot for the past year and it's awesome. It has drastically improved my productivity as a developer and it's made it easier for me to try things out and break things, which I love. And Copilot is now available to everyone. Uh, it's priced at $10 a month, um, though there's a 60 day trial so you can test it out and verified students and maintainers of open source projects uh, can get it for free. This uh, is for individual GitHub accounts, but Copilot for companies will be available later in the year. If you have not had a chance to try out Copilot, you really should because it's awesome. More info is in the links in the show notes and the description down below. Good stuff. And speaking of Copilot, Copilot is actually built um, using a, a ML model called the OpenAI Codex, and that is a descendant of GPT-3. And GPT-3, for those that aren't familiar, it's a language prediction model that can be used to produce human-like text. And it's one of the most exciting advancements that we've seen in AI and so-called deep learning in a really, really long time. Well, Simon Wilson did something really cool, and that was to showcase how he can use GPT-3 to explain how code works. And this is actually pretty similar to the explain feature that's available in Copilot Labs. But what I love about Simon's blog post, linked down below, is that he really breaks down um, what the model is doing, how it works, uh, and he uses OpenAI's playground interface for that. And the results, the results are amazing, amazingly convincing. Um, his blog post is definitely worth a read, especially some of the tips and tricks that he points out about avoiding maybe leading questions to get the best results. I'm just gonna quote Simon here uh, for something that he says about GPT-3 because as cool as all this stuff is, it's still important to keep this in mind. Uh, Simon writes, once again, I'm reminded that tools like GPT-3 should be classified as bicycles for the mind. You still have to know how to pedal. And bicycles for the mind, indeed, that's a great Steve Jobsism, and it's cool to see. This is very cool, and it's actually great to see machine learning explaining stuff in human terms. But if you're curious about what's possible with GPT-3 and its descendants, you should definitely check out Simon's blog post. It is linked down below. Next, if you're looking for a new web framework, and look, who doesn't want yet another web framework? Uh, I found one that's totally fresh. In fact, that's its name, Fresh. Uh, so Fresh is actually part of Deno, which is uh, a modern runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript, and it's similar to Node.js. In fact, it's actually from the creator of Node.js, but there's still a lot of important differences. And um, Fresh is a web framework that's designed for speed, reliability, and simplicity, and it has some really cool features baked in. And so that includes, you know, like it has TypeScript support out of the box, there's zero runtime overhead, so that means no JavaScript is shipped to the client by default. There's just-in-time rendering at the edge and no configuration is necessary. Very cool stuff. I've got a link to the docs and the project page in the links in the show notes down below. I've been really interested in checking out Dino, and this is a great way to do it. I'm actually gonna probably build my next web project trying this out just to see how it works. Next up. It is July, and that means that the latest macOS developer and public betas are available to the public. So macOS 13, known as Ventura, will be out in the fall, but developers and people who like to try new things can install the betas now. But if you've ever wanted to install a macOS beta without destroying your main machine, you know that that process isn't always easy. So like, yeah, of course you can install it on an external drive, 
or an APFS partition, and then you can boot from that. But for a lot of users, that can be complicated and time consuming. Fortunately, my pal Guillerme Rambo has released a new OSS macOS app called Virtual Buddy that creates virtual machines um, of any version of macOS 12 or later for Apple Silicon. And the app is simple and easy to use, and you can use it um, either to open like a custom IPSW file, you can download a macOS installer from a list of options, you can even offer it a custom URL to use. And then Virtual Buddy will just spin up a virtual machine and away you go. This project's fantastic. Rambo put it on GitHub, which we love. And I'm just really grateful that the process of testing new macOS versions has been greatly simplified this way so that I won't be tempted to say YOLO and install it on my main machine, which I do not recommend you do if you value your sanity. So use Virtual Buddy instead. Anyway, uh, links to the project are down below. Great job, Rambo. And now it's time for my pick of the week. All right, so we love retro computing here at The Download, and this was something that I saw recently and it just kind of blew my mind. All right, so Nick Build created a project that he calls TensorFlow Lite for the Commodore 64. And this allows him to run inferences using TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers on a Commodore 64. Yes, the same Commodore 64 that came out in 1982. Wait, what? Okay, so this is how it works. Um, and, and Nick is using something called TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers, and this is an open source machine learning framework where the TensorFlow model is built and trained on a host computer, and then he extracts that sequence of operations and model parameters, and then he parses that into uh, Commodore 64 basic, and then those inferences are run on the Commodore 64. And so Nick had to modify some of the TensorFlow Lite micro source code to get all this working the way he wanted it to, but the results are great. Uh, like you can see from this video, it's working, it's amazing. I'm gonna be honest, some of this stuff, all right, a lot of it is like over my head, um, but he did it, he did it well, I think it's great. You can check out his GitHub project and his YouTube demonstration in the links below. I just, again, like this is so cool. Great job, Nick, I love it. What a, what throwback computer would you like to see some this sort of thing on? You know, like what, what, what other ML inferences should we do? Uh, the Atari 800, maybe the, the ZX Spectrum? Let me know in the comments down below and also let me know your thoughts on any of our other stories and uh, in, in general, what will you think of the show? So once again, if you like this episode, give it a like and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.